Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. I recently finished a single-handed Hi-Fi tube amp build, and I had such a good time with that build that I kind of want to keep moving in that direction and continue building things along that same vein. And uh, one of my reflections after building that amp is it sounds really good, and I really enjoy listening to it. But I'm not exactly sure how well it's pairing or mating with my Overnight Sensation desktop speakers. Uh, I built those speakers back in 2015, so I've had them for five years. They've been an excellent introduction to hi-fi. I've got a lot of hours in them, and I cherish them very much so. But uh, one of the things I've been looking at is that their specifications list that it's got a speaker sensitivity rating of about 83 decibels, which is somewhat low. So the basic idea with sensitivity rating is that um, when you put a certain amount of energy into a speaker the higher the sensitivity rating, the more power you're going to get out of it. Whereas a lower sensitivity rating, uh, it's going to be less efficient in transferring that same energy into volume that you actually hear. And so, because I've got a single-ended 5-watt tube amp, that's not a terribly powerful amp. That you know, And I'm kind of running it pretty high on its volume control. Um, and so having a lower sensitivity speaker maybe doesn't pair very well. So I think a higher, uh, if I had a higher sensitivity speaker, that would better match with the lower powered amp. At least that's kind of some of the reasoning that I want to explore. Second, because I'm having so much fun, I just want to build something. So I'm hoping that I can learn a lot. I'm just going to dive into this and hopefully come out the other end with a lot more knowledge and experience. And then thirdly, this is coronavirus time. Everybody uh, knows all about that and what's going on. And so this is partly to give me something to do while we're stuck at home. Uh, this is the perfect time to embark on a project like this and hopefully share it with you all, maybe inspire you guys to build something of yourselves and enjoy something like that while you guys are also stuck at home. So feel free to join along with me. So my goal for this project is to design and build a set of bookshelf hi-fi speakers that will mate well with my 6v6 tube amp. So as we dive into this project, I wanted to let you guys know that pretty much all of the motivation and guidance for this project came from another YouTube channel, Kirby Meets Audio. So go ahead and check him out. Give him a subscribe if you're interested in this. He's got a lot of excellent content on this topic. And he's got a how-to guide that kind of walks through his design perspectives. And I'm basically following that to a T. So um, let's just dive right in and first talk about some of the goals or the parameters or some of the restrictions that I've got with this project. So for starters, as I've already said, I want it to mate well with my 6v6 Hi-Fi tube amp. So I'm looking for a little bit higher speaker sensitivity, maybe even also a little bit better low-end coverage than my overnight sensations. So to give me something that is just a little bit different than the overnight sensations in some of those areas that I just mentioned. Number two, I want these to be bookshelf speakers. My listening area is at a desk in my office. It's in a kind of an average size bedroom. It's an imperfect listening space, but it's what I've got and it's what I use. And so I want it to fit on my desk. You know, I've got my computer tower, my monitor in front of me, and I want the speakers to be left and right. Now I'm okay if they're a little bit bigger than the overnight sensations and I've got some plans towards that end, but I don't want them to be so large. I don't want floor standing speakers because uh, that's not kind of the area that I'm going to be putting these in. Maybe sometime in the future I can do that, but for now I want to do some bookshelf speakers. So next let's talk about use application. I am almost entirely listening to music for enjoyment with these speakers. I listen to music with my kids a lot or just for myself. Um, it's almost always just for entertainment value. So I want them to sound good for the purpose of listening to music for entertainment. Uh, second, I do a little bit of mixing uh, at, with, at my desk when I'm kind of preparing or rendering videos for this YouTube channel. So I wouldn't say that I mix there primarily. Audio engineering is something I do kind of on the side for fun. And most of my mixing I do here in my basement in my music room. But some of the mixing I do up in that room. So I want them to be, you know, mostly inclined towards hi-fi music enjoyment, but maybe with a little bit of a angle towards uh, mixing and, and accuracy as well. So I'm kind of splitting the difference maybe between those two to some extent. Next, this is probably my first project other than the Overnight Sensations, which was a total paint by numbers kit where I'm really trying to tackle on speaker building. So I'm not going to get into a tremendous amount of detail 
I know that there's probably a lot of depth and complexity and physics and science that can go into designing excellent speakers, and I l applaud all of those that can do that. I'm going to keep this a little bit more relatively simple. So, uh, you know, I'm going to limit probably to like a two-way design with a tweeter and a woofer, uh, probably a single, uh, or a, you know, I'm going to have two, but a single port or vent in my box. Uh, you know, do some basic calculations, try to get the most optimal box size. Uh, also, with simplicity is kind of going to be my crossover. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to stick to maybe like a two-way crossover. That's relatively straightforward. Um, I'm also probably going to stick with a relatively low budget. So I'm not going to look to put, you know, thousands of dollars into these speakers. Probably going to limit it to maybe under about 200 bucks uh, for drivers. And I also, one of my design goals is I want to build the cabinets. So again, sticking with simple design, uh, that is limiting for me. You know, I live in a town where what I have access to is probably going to be some, maybe some pine 12-inch boards or some other wood like that. I, I don't really know if I can get my hands on MDF very easily. Uh, so I'm just going to work with whatever wood I've got. And I acknowledge that maybe that's not the most optimal or ideal choice. But also, um, you know, I want to get these things built here in the next couple weeks. So I'm going to work with what I have. Um, and and accept those constraints. All right, guys, now that we have talked a little bit about the project, let's take a look at some of the specific choices that I have made so far. First up, let's talk about the drivers that I selected. My first choice was this Dayton Audio RS150-8 6-inch reference woofer. And then my second choice was this Dayton Auto DC28 FT 1 and 1 8 inch silk dome truncated tweeter. So um, a little bit of the reasoning behind some of these items. First of all, I kind of took a little bit of reference to what I know about speakers and monitors. I know that like a 5-inch speaker is kind of the standard for bookshelf studio monitors that you can buy kind of at a hobbyist level. Like my Yamaha HS5s have a 5-inch woofer. There's also like the JBL 305 or the Rocket 5 or whatever. Um, you know, so that five inch is kind of a nice, very popular, widely used sweet spot for that kind of deal. And I also know that a lot of those monitors have a larger brother that is an eight inch woofer. And so I kind of chose to go with the six inch as a little bit of a in between. So, you know, it's a slightly bigger than the five inch, but not as big as the eight inch, mostly just because I didn't really want to go to the eight inch for terms of, you know, again, I'm not purely doing this for uh, studio monitors. I want these more for listening to music and, and being driven by my new hi-fi single and amp. So I wanted a little bit bigger, maybe to get a little bit better bass response, but I didn't want to get too big that it might, you know, struggle to fit on my desk or, you know, maybe it would require a larger amp. I, I guess I don't really even know, but some of these decisions were just kind of based upon what I know or what I like, and I kind of felt like a six-inch woofer would be a nice size give me good low-end bass response, would fit well into a bookshelf speaker cabinet, you know, just slightly bigger than a very standard, typical, popular uh, monitor of this choice. And also these Dayton Audio ones at 40 bucks a pop are within my budget. They're relatively affordable, and uh, I feel pretty confident that I think they'll deliver pretty good sound quality, uh, even at a pretty affordable price. So I was pretty happy with those. And then these 1 8 inch tweeters... Um, Kind of a similar type story. I did a little bit of research on a lot of the t monitors that you see, and a lot of them have a, about a one inch or a one eight, you know, one eight, one and one eighth inch is pretty common. And um, actually, I think these got suggested in uh, right down here, this frequently bought area. Um, so, yeah, just go ahead and try pick these two. And um, one of the things that I did is you have this this specifications file right here. So I downloaded those specifications, and that's what you see here in these two tabs. And these tabs are important because it gives you a lot of the parameters that you need. So I was looking at the frequency response here. And for what I'm hoping, um, you can see within about 5 decibels, we get all the way down to 50 hertz. Um, and then, uh, you know, it kind of levels off just below 90. I think 88 is the, is the, spe is the specification. That was a... That was an important, it says 88.7 is the SPL, so hopefully that is a more, I know that's a higher sensitivity speaker than my overnight sensations, which are coming in at about 83 decibels. 
And then I'm also looking to get this guy to about this 1K. Here's 1.5K, kind of into this range. And then I'm hoping that the tweeter can kind of take over from there and so I don't have to use any of this garbage. But in this area, I felt like this woofer looks like it's going to perform really, really well for me. And then looking at the tweeter, um, again, I so if I'm looking at about 1K to transfer to the tweeter, that's kind of where this guy picks up and starts to be really good. So I think at about this 1.5K range could be a nice sweet spot for my tweeter. So first up, we have two reference series 6-inch lumen comb woofers. I believe this is the RS150-8. Pretty excited for these woofers. Second, we've got two of their classic series 1 and 1 8 inch truncated silk dome tweeters. Next, we've got two 2 inch tubes, ported, adjustable, adjustable tubes. Next up, we got this bag of white Acousta stuff. Gotta stick that in the speaker, I guess. And last but not least, we got a bunch of crossover components. So, yeah, I think we're pretty much good to go and start building this box.